The Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 9, Teaching 267. 1. Beloved toddlers who unite your spirit to await my presence among you, bless you. 2. You come to look for the fruit on the tree of life and the fruit I give to each one of you. 3. The radiation of my love is the breeze that rocks these trees. 4. Life, disciples, is the most beautiful and profound book that the Creator He has bequeathed His children. But it is necessary to learn to read in it to find how many beauties and wonders it contains. Who better than I, the Divine Teacher, to teach you page by page and lesson by lesson the content of that book? 5. A long time ago it remained open on a page, preventing your indifference from offering you one new lesson. You were stagnant. But the moment came when you turned your eyes to the book that speaks of life, of eternity and of light, and you contemplated how the Master turned the familiar page to show you a new teaching. 6. The knowledge that this book imparts proves that your past was not sterile for your spirit, because already illuminated with the light of knowledge, you discover the reason for many teachings, you find the meaning of life and the essence of God that exists in everything created. 7. Blessed are the spirits who on their long journey have already crossed the vast deserts of trials they have passed, the crossroads of the path, and have left behind the dark forests, with their snares and dangers. Those who have passed the great tests will be those who most clearly understand my word and that can hardly fall into an abyss. 8. The book that exists in each one of you is also great. Will you understand what book I am talking about? Of what refers to your past? of all that your spirit has lived and whose history grows day by day. When you are in my bosom, you will enjoy reviewing it and seeing how much you struggle to climb the spiritual mountain of your improvement. 9. Now you are living in a time of pain and it is essential that you understand its meaning, because in this way you will come to understand that the action of pain on sinners is purifying. Later everyone will know that I have destined for each of my children a garment but that to possess it it is necessary that you wash the glass inside and out until clean. Do you know what that garment is? I will tell you, that garment is the truth. 10. Who can say that he is not qualified to be my disciple, or that he is not strong to carry my message to humanity, pretending that he has no experience, that he has lived little or that he has not understood his brothers? 11. No, my little ones, you have not lived little, nor is it little that you have experienced. Doubt and mistrust they come from the sheath. They come from the heart that falters because it ignores the strength and the light that its spirit has collected on the way. 12. What do you know about your past and how far is your origin? What do you know about where you come from? Where have you passed? Where are you headed? 13. No one thinks he is small or considers himself ignorant having reached this third era, least of all you whom I have called firstborn. 14. Why do you fear the future? Are you going to waste all the experience that your spirit has accumulated in the past? Are you going to leave the sowing without reaping the harvest? No disciples think that no one can twist his destiny, but it does delay the hour of its triumph and increase the sorrows that already exist on the path. 15. As long as you are not persuaded of this truth, I will not send you with the good news to the regions and the nations, because you would not have firmness in your words and the world could not recognize you as emissaries of Christ. 16. I am bringing you closer to simple, spiritual and simple worship, so that instead of occupying yourself and wasting time in external practices, you specify to fulfill the essential that I have already told you on infinite occasions. It is charity. 17. You have already passed your childhood and spiritual adolescence and today you are at the threshold of a new age, in which you will reach the maturity that is fullness. 18. Few are those who listen to me, few are, therefore, those who know. Look at this humanity, living in the time of light and stumbling and falling as if walking in darkness. Taste his chalice, look at his wounds, feel his grief, look into his spirit, and if you have charity and love towards your brothers, you will cry in pain and feel full of pity then a noble and high impulse will arise from your heart that will move you to be the tireless sours of love, balm and light. But if you keep hiding shyly of the looks of the world, do you think that your heart becomes sensitive and refined in the feeling of pity towards your fellow men? 19.
19. Do you want to conquer spirits? Come with the balm of my word and with the anointing of your charity. 20. Do not try to prove to anyone that their beliefs or rituals are imperfect, because the result will be negative. Go to the needy, seek the origin of their pain, and console them, then you will see how a confession sprouts from their lips sincere, telling you that you are carriers of the truth. 21. Truly I tell you that I too am closer to my children in the moments of their pain, in the moment of their bitterness. 22. The time has come for all of you to listen again to my word speaking to you clearly, because my mission is to save you, but not to cover up your mistakes. 23. It is necessary for everything to return to its original truth, and for this the fight of ideas among humanity will arise. Through the materialism that reigns in this world, men with great inspirations will emerge, and those lights will be the precursor signs of the establishment of spiritualism on earth. 24. Seers, prophets, enlightened and inspired, all will announce to humanity my presence in spirit. They will have the mission to lay the foundations for the building of the temple of the Lord, the temple formed of hearts, not stones, in whose interior burns the flame of faith. 25. That temple will be great and from it you will contemplate the sanctuary that my omnipotence formed from the beginning, so that all my children dwell within him. 26. Today, that you contemplate so much hardness in your hearts, that you see the roots of traditions and fanaticism in your heart, it seems almost impossible for you to regenerate, transform and establish the doctrine of spirituality. However, I tell you that all beings are destined to come to me to dwell in the light and know the truth. My will could not fail to be fulfilled and that instead of saving you, you would have to lose. Meditate on this and you will understand that your evil, which are your imperfections, although lasting, will pass. 27 Great is the trial that weighs on humanity. Your intuition tells you that the world is under my divine justice, that the pride of men has been touched by the Father and that the force of that justice increases every day. But look how man does not give in his pride, does not confess his faults, does not repent before divine justice. Themselves they prolong the time of bitterness and drag many innocents into the abyss. How long will be this time of pain? until men open their eyes to the truth and bow down to the only power that exists which is me. 28. People, do you not feel happy to know why everything is happening around you and to have found the means of contributing to the salvation and peace of your brothers? 29. If you experience that happiness, you have understood my word and you will know how to perform your delicate mission. 30. From 1866 to 1950 my word, this light of the Spirit has been vibrating over you in the same way that you see now. During that time, many understandings have developed their gifts. Men and women have been prepared. They have come to form the body of my servants, of my peasants. 31. Through the understanding of my chosen ones, my Spirit has been manifested. But could you believe that these creatures by whom has spoken the Master are fully aware of what has flowed from his lips? I tell you that although they feel that it is something infinite what has descended to their understanding, it is not possible for them to value or conceive the greatness, the transcendence of what his lips have said without knowing. 32. After 1950, that is, after my departure, this people will make my work known to humanity, but not according to human will, but my will. These spokesmen for whom I have spoken, at the moment of expressing my vibration, have not been able to understand what their mouths have poured out. Tomorrow they will be amazed to see the fulfillment of my prophecies, of all that I have through them, announced. Then those who were always fervent will embrace their mission with greater love and those who sometimes lacked faith, they will fall sorry for having doubted for moments, their faith will ignite and they will be faithful to me until the end. 33. Someone in the crowd who listens to me and asks, Master, is it possible that there is someone who is your spokesperson and being your ray perched in his understanding? Doubt that you are the one who is manifesting through him? To the which I tell you, yes, there are those who have lived in doubt being my spokesman and even at the very moment of communication, they have doubted. However, how great has been the word, the light, the truth and the consolation that those poor lips have shed transfigured at the moment of spilling inspiration. 34. Why do you think the teaching has been great when I overflowed with them? 
because they have been the most tormented, who on many occasions have tried harder to rise to find the best way to fulfill me, because they are the one who more clearly approach me, always seeking to make themselves worthy of the position they carry. 35. How many times your doubt comes from your humility, because they are the ones that from the moment I consecrated you for this service, they were disturbed and asked themselves, but is it possible that I, little creature, unworthy sinner, insignificant be, have you been chosen by God for such a great mission? 36. Do you see beyond that doubt, the love and fear of those my little ones? Do you understand now why there are those who doubt and why in spite of it, I spill through their conduit? 37. How many times does the spokesperson who has faith in my presence be satisfied with it and does not put the feeling to be inspired, which results in his cold or monotonous expression, as well as that which has been dominated by? Vanity has always been the poorest in essence and the scarcest in light. 38. My most perfect, most complete manifestation, you have obtained it through those spokesmen who in a delivery towards their master, in an ecstasy of faith, love and humility before him, they have detached themselves from the world and from the body with the ideal of being useful, with the thought of his brothers in need of light. How few have known to prepare and receive me like this. 39. Have you not discovered on the inspired pedestal a transfiguration in the culminating moments of the lesson? Have you not had the spiritual sensation of the sparkling of divine light through those lips? Those are the hours when the largest pages of the Third Testament have been written. 40. Blessed are you who unite your spirits in times of trial. From the first to the last, all of you are being touched, so that you do not sleep or fall into temptation. 41. The time is approaching when I will give you my last lesson and you must be prepared for that day, because I will ask you for your first harvest and right there I will give you the seed and the teaching so that you can continue cultivating my lands. 42. While some understand the meaning of their tests and are blessing my will, others ignore why and they rebel. 43. Remember that a long time ago I was announcing these days when whirlwinds would unleash and within your people there would be chaos. 44. Very few were those who kept my word in mind and kept watch, imitating the wise virgins in my parable. The more they forgot my prophecies and allowed themselves to be surprised, making it easy for confusion to rule over them. 45. This is the gale that I announced as did the Baptist, in whom Elijah incarnated, that he would come to destroy every bad tree and to pluck dry leaves or vain fruit from the good ones. 46. Will this confusion pass? You ask me in anguish and I tell you yes, but before long you will have to fight and cry. 47. To those who truly yearn for the triumph of light and unification, I say, persevere in prayer, in study of my word and in the practice of what I have taught you, that your will not be done, but mine and you will truly succeed. 48. I will give the triumph to those who pursue spirituality, to those who remove from their hearts even the last trace of materialism and idolatry, to those who obey my will and interpret my doctrine well. I will strengthen each other and thus, meditating and preparing, wait for the right moment to speak and say, this is the work of the Father, this is spiritualism. 49. I will manifest myself among them at the precise moments of their study and their meditations, granting them new revelations as an incentive to persevere on the path of spirituality. 50. During the time of my communication you have carried out various missions, some of them within these enclosures and others where you have been requested. I have given each of these missions a different name and thus there have been guides, spokesmen, faculties and other appointments more. 51. I want that when my manifestation and that of the spiritual world cease at the end of 1950, those appointments that you have had and you come closer to each other, so that no one thinks they are superior and no one feel inferior. 52. At that time you will not need those names at all. You will not be less respected or loved because you hold this mission. The essential thing is that you persevere in the truth and that your works of love deserve the gratitude of your brothers. 53. I tell all the people that the highest and most beautiful title that man possesses is that of the Son of God, although it is necessary to deserve it. That is the purpose of the law and the teachings, 
inspire you to know my truth so that you can become worthy children of the Divine Father who is the Supreme Perfection. 54. With this word, I encourage you to continue firmly on the path traced by me. 55. In this way I comfort you in these hours of trial so that you do not lose heart or let your faith extinguish. 56. Leave in me, through your prayer, that flows of suffering, concerns, desires and requests that your heart contains. 57. I know everything, everything comes to my spirit, but I will give you according to my will and when the moment is right. 58. If I make dew fall on the flowers, how can I not send my effluvium to your spirit? 59. Here you have me in essence, revealing to you the new message. 60. I come at this time teaching spirituality, which will replace the false love that men have professed for me. 61. I am giving you the opportunity to truly love me, serving and loving you so that my example teaches you to love one another, showing that it is not necessary to give a coin to practice charity, making each other understand that the one who thinks he is poorer has an inexhaustible wealth of goods to offer to his brothers. 62. That large field where you can sow the seed of love has received the name. Spiritual countryside, in the field I invite all of you to work so that you can see your gifts emerge as you develop them in the practice of good. 63. I have endowed you with inspiration, healing balm, intuition, spiritual strength and peace, but I have also trusted various missions among my listeners. Some have had the mission of receiving my light in their minds and transmitting it through the word. Others have had the gift of receiving the spiritual world through understanding. Others have been given to contemplate something from the beyond and something from the future through the gift of clairvoyance, that is, the spiritual gaze. 64. Some have also received the gift of analysis and still others the gift of speech. 65. Since my communication began through human understanding, I wanted you to be putting your gifts and that you were beginning your spiritual mission so that when the day of my departure arrived, you would have traveled part of the way and you were not going to feel weak to start fulfilling such a delicate mandate. 66. Some have known how to interpret the divine idea and have endeavored to bring it to fruition. But there are also, and these are, for the most part, those who have mistaken the meaning of this work. 67. These are the errors that I come to claim against this people because I do not want humanity to come to make fun of, who for so long have been teaching my doctrine. 68. Why materialize by detailing each of the mistakes that have been made and are made in your practices? Your consciousness and the advice of the spiritual world will suffice so that you do not lack corrections and teachings. 69. I tell you that those who love my work most disinterestedly, will be the ones who sooner leave their material practices and those who most easily correct their mistakes, because they have always been eager for spiritual improvement and it will not mean for them no sacrifice suppressing their habitual practices, knowing that they will take a step forward. On the other hand, he who has sought through forms, practices and rites to create a personality within my work, a means of life or flattery for his vanity, he will have to fight a lot with himself to be able to renounce what it means to him the spiritual work without being it, because in my work you only have to accept the pure, the elevated, the perfect, plus everything that it keeps in purity, materiality, and falsehood that is human work. 70. When will you understand the essence and purpose of this work? How long will you understand that for being mine and for having been entrusted to you, should you respect it as it is without adding anything of your own? 71. O oh, beloved people, I have brought you out of the scum into the light, but there are many who insist on living in darkness. They will have to be surprised by the evidence already looming in the distance. 72. As father and as teacher I have fulfilled among you, it is up to the people to pray, meditate and practice according to my will. My peace be with you.